Hey y'all, this is Timothy with the Obra Wood Co. And today I'm going to be turning one of my best-selling honeycomb bottle stoppers. So, fun fact is I've sold six of these to one person. I don't really have any other fun facts. Anyway, I am just going to be using this piece of wood. I don't actually know what it is. It was just a blank we had in our cabinet. It kind of looks like maple to me. But... This is what I'm going to be using, and I'm going to be turning it on the Ruth Niles thread and screw piece. So let's see if I can screw that in. We recently acquired this chuck piece, and it is a lot easier than the other ones we've had. Those have, I don't know, they've ruined the wood that rips the threads, and I have not been able to turn it a smooth piece. Okay, so I'm going to be roughing this out at about, I don't know, in between 2,000 and 3,500 RPMs. For something this small, I like to turn it fast. I'm just going to turn it with the tail stock. It's big enough where it doesn't have to be on perfect center because it'll make it center for my piece. And here we go. Uh, I guess time lapse time. Okay, so now it is super smooth. That scraping motion with the skew gives you a super nice finish. And I have it with this. I'm just going to mark this real quick about where I want my lines to be. Pretty much for that, I'm just marking what each section is going to be. These shavings smell so good. I think it might be maple. Leave your comments below on what type of wood you think this would be. I really don't know, but it is a beautiful, amazing smelling wood. Um, now time for the shaping. <laughs> I did a super light scrape just for the purpose of cleaning that out before sanding. Now I'm just going to sand it through grit. I'm starting 120 and I will sand it through probably about 400. Now that I have most of the sanding done, I'm going to save myself a little time just with the random orbit sander. And I'm gonna reverse sand this. And that should do it. Now I've got to do is oil it. I'm going to oil it a little bit slower. I'll probably do like 600 RPMs. Yeah, 650. And just oil it with the Mahoney's walnut oil.
And I might have done a teeny bit too much oil. Let's move some drops. That's the thing about oil. If you do put on too much, it's easy just to soak up a little bit with the paper towel. There we are. I think this is done. I'm just going to unscrew this. Some people just put the lathe in reverse to unscrew. I prefer not to because you can always ruin your piece doing that. And for that little step, not worth it. And now just sand the bottom. Got the bottom cleaned up a little bit. And let's put it on. Oh crud. I'm just gonna use some medium CA glue. Hey guys, so what happened was I finished turning the piece and I went to glue it to this bottle stopper piece. I just got these off of Etsy, they're great. You ship them from China, you know, like everything else. But anyway, I was gluing it, these together because my threads were not quite the right size because I was using the Ruth Niles tap, but not a Ruth Niles stopper. So I glued them together and there was a big bead of CA all around and I had already used the activator so it was pretty obviously there and I just didn't like how it looked. It was, you know, kind of clumsy. So what I did was I took it to the grinder and I ground off the CA bead but I also accidentally scratched up a piece of this copper. So after that, I just kept grinding it until it was solid I don't know, chrome silver color. And I am super happy with how it turned out. As far as I know, this is a one of a kind piece simply because of its two toned colors. And I am super happy with it. Thank you guys for watching. This has been how to turn a honeycomb stopper or wine bottle topper with Timothy Olson. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.